video is up and audio is going bow, 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 bow. <laughs> get excited all right lissa latella hello hi how are you no uh special guests today just us just maybe us. the occasional appearance by our crazy dog evie just bringing it back to and my the... christmas mug because it's christmas it is christmas time now finally yes, get excited christmas. um i love christmas so welcome to some out of the box uh i felt like we had to do a podcast today we're it itching be... to get one I'm, out i am excited to to talk about our topic today which is the cross body connection in freestyle <laughs> We're going to be doing sound effects all podcast this podcast. Maybe. I appreciate it. I'm laying it. across my body for those of you not watching on um, YouTube. So this idea of the cross-body connection is not something uh, new or something I haven't thought about before, mm -hmm. but I'm excited to talk about it because um, I've kind of had an epiphany with it. Ooh. And if I have an epiphany, I want to share it with everybody. Okay. I don't know if that's selfish of me. But I don't care. I mean, I'm sharing it with the world. Egotistical, I guess. Yeah, probably. but that's not new. Probably. Uh, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a second. For this crossbody connection, is this every single stroke, or are we being specific about one stroke today? I'm only talking about freestyle. Okay. This could also apply to backstroke, but who cares? But Let's today, talk about freestyle. Okay. Um. So. The, it, the the idea of this crossbody concept came up in a conversation with one of my open water clients mm -hmm. who said to me, oh, I've been swimming open water all week and I just feel like a wet noodle when I'm swimming in the ocean. I just keep Yikes. getting thrown away, thrown all over the place by the waves. When I'm in a pool, I feel like my posture has gotten so much better and I'm so much more rigid. But as soon as I hit open water, I'm just all over the place. Mm -hmm. So... It made me start surveying her and start questioning, okay, well, what's going on there? Why is this happening? Right. And I started to recognize that what she was describing to me was sort of a forced rotation, which I'll try to clarify. Okay, please. When most people are starting to learn how to swim, they are specifically taught how to rotate and that you must rotate and so therefore they are taught to rotate whether it's independent from their arms meaning mm -hmm. i have definitely taught people how to rotate with their arms down by their side just with their kick right right just learning the concept of rotation right. yeah right. and so yeah. when people are told make sure you rotate your hips they're not necessarily going to connect that movement with their arms and their legs Right. You're thinking of it as like an independent thing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a puzzle piece, mm -hmm. but they're not connecting the puzzle pieces. Right. Right. So it made me really think also because I have been contemplating this idea of where does rotation come from? It's Just a great question. Rotation in swimming. Yeah. Where does rotation in swimming come from? In, in previous podcasts, we talked about, well, it's a little bit of hips, a little mm -hmm. bit of legs, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of shoulder blade, right? But my epiphany is your rotation can come from an external source, not internally, not your hips, not your legs, not your shoulder blade, but Aliens. rather the leverage you cause or generate with your catch. Is that necessarily external? Yes, because it's still you. I don't understand how that's you're external. generating resistance against the water, but the water is providing the resistance to allow you to do the exactly. rotation. Exactly. All right, let's 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 back the trolley up. You have questions. I just, <laughs> or you want me to to explain more? I think, like as an o overarching statement, we just need to make sure everyone is aware that. In all parts of swimming, every movement you make is connected to another movement. Yes. Every movement is a piece of the puzzle, as you said beforehand, mm -hmm. put together builds the whole. Right. In general, Interlocking pieces like that can puzzle. be said about any stroke you do. You can even apply that to walking. 
You know, simple it's movement true. is walking. Everything you do yeah. is connected to something else. Nothing is an independent Yeah, it's not part. an independent part to force. Right. So if you're having trouble understanding, I would just, like think this, about when you walk, like your arms need to move. Yeah, they swing back and swing forth. Back and like forth. Your body, your upper body That's connected body is... to your hips moving and exactly. the placement of your one foot after the other. Exactly. So just think about it like that in case you're having trouble. And you'd be surprised how complicated walking actually is. Well, yeah, it was hard for me to say that sentence. <laughs> I was like, well, how do I, how do I fucking walk? I don't even know. It's Sorry, really actually, excuse, there's excuse a lot going on when someone walks. Well, yeah. Um, but anyway, so overarching statement. You can tell statement, a lot about someone by how they walk. Right. Every movement is connected. Every piece makes up the right. whole of your stroke. And I, I think it's really important to talk about this concept, even if someone isn't quite advanced enough to demonstrate the concept. Because at some point, you have to think sort of big picture and globally in swimming. Mm -hmm. You can't just isolate. Isolate right. does not work. Well, it's isolation is almost like uh, going through the motion. It doesn't really produce the one hundred percent the outcome that we want. Right, which is why a lot of the cases in our lessons we do drills and then we build on the progressions of them and then we go back to the full stroke. So it's like yes, you're working on the piece. But then you're working on it as a whole, and then we're making sure right. it stays proper right. as we move back to standard stroke. So I've worked with just people as an overarching concept. That's yeah, I've okay. worked with people that we have isolated a single movement mm -hmm. for several weeks before we try to bring it back in globally, right? And connect it. So well, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard, but it can it can people can very easily get lost in the isolation and only mm -hmm. think about isolation because you hear this a lot when people talk about like, Oh, there's too many things to think about. Well, mm -hmm. that means they're trying to think about all these individual pieces instead of letting pieces stick and fit <clears throat> together. Right. Um, so, okay. So wait, so we did that overarching concept. Now yep. you may go back to what you were talking about with the resistance of the water playing okay. a part. Now you may go okay. back and explain that. So part of the epiphany has come from working with breaststrokers. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. So with breaststroke, at some point, they generate a catch position. And that catch position mm -hmm. is supposed to give them leverage to pull their hips towards their hands so their hips are moving under their shoulders. Okay? Right, and that's when you're taking a stroke. Yep. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we can take that very similar idea and apply it to our rotation and freestyle. If I set my catch with my right hand, mm -hmm. if I set it effectively... My left hip should rotate inward. There you go. Lissa just demonstrated it. <laughs> I tried to. I'm not really sure. In the chair. It's weird when you're sitting. Yes. So, <clears throat> okay. So, also, sorry, guys. I have a cold. Oh, so do I. But we're going to make it through. Um, push through. Push through. I think it can be really easy to un understand mm -hmm. if someone can picture themselves creating a paddle right setting a catch position it's mm -hmm. the same as creating a paddle slightly inward or in line with their shoulder so as opposed to as opposed to sliding outward away from their shoulder inward like your hand is moving inward from your shoulder towards your face yep. so it's almost like you're making a diagonal the right hand side of a v if uh, you're using your right hand, yes. <laughs> Is that helpful or hurtful? No one knows. <laughs> I think sure. that's actually a pretty good one. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay. Um, so if your right hand doesn't move inward to catch, but slides outward to catch, which is a very common thing. At Swimbox, we call that petting the dog. Well, at least I do. Do we? I do. <laughs> Sometimes it's petting the cat. Aren't we it just cute? depends. Nah, it's petting the dog. Um, so... As a hand slides outward, mm -hmm. that catch is going to be late. Therefore, the rotation cannot happen until there is leverage. So that throws off the whole thing. It would throw everything off. And then everything following the rotation is thrown off as well. So then you're just screwed. And then you're forcing rotation. And when you force it, it's not really... Well, that's hard, eh? Well, you're not really... Uh, you're not really supporting the arm movement if you force your rotation. Mm -hmm. And your arm isn't supporting your rotation. They need to support each other. It's a okay. symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. All right? They need each other. All right? So one of the coolest things was, I was I've was i been 
so excited about this idea. Uh, if you are listening to this and you are one of my clients, you should expect to be working on this sometime soon if we haven't Get already worked ready. on it together. Um, because I'm just really excited about it. It seems to be sort of uh, bringing a whole new level of understanding to my clients. And I, okay. so I, I, I want to share that, right? I want right. people to understand. So one of my clients uh, yesterday, I think, I don't know, my days are running together now. If he was generating leverage with his left arm, but didn't allow his right hip to rotate down, right? Mm -hmm. That leverage allows the right hip to rotate down. It doesn't force the right hip to go down. So that leverage was allowing his hip to go down, but he didn't allow his hip to rotate downward. It hurt his shoulder. Well, that seems In the, obvious to me. No. In the back of his shoulder. Not the joint? Well, kind of the joint. It's the, it's it's all part of the AC joint, which is like the, the majority of the shoulder. Okay. So that was a huge moment for us both, myself and that client. Because when he was on the Vasa trainer, completely flat, he was having a similar sensation. He couldn't move his shoulder blade down towards his but on the Vasa without it hurting. And that didn't make any sense to oh, me. Oh, that's interesting. But if he rotated his opposite hip downward as he did it, no pain, nothing. It was amazing. That's okay. So the idea, that's not to say he didn't rotate before. He was rotating right, before. but it was not part of. But it wasn't part of the whole thing. It wasn't part of the whole freestyle it was move my arm through the water so i move forward and oh i'll rotate to make sure that i have mobility in my shoulder versus mm -hmm. letting that catch generate the leverage to help the opposite hip rotate downward to generate that mobility which was a very complicated sort of thing to say just now I mean, that's I don't a complicated sentence yes. i'm not even sure how to ask you to clarify that i thought it was clear just complicated uh <laughs> There's that ego. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it's it's really interesting in, in that sort of sense, I think. But it also reinforces our approach with the circle freestyle. So okay. what I mean by that is... You mean it's like the philosophy. philosophy. That's a good one. Try to do that again. Philosophy. Good job. Behind... Yes, kind okay. of. Okay. Because I also I often get sort of puzzled or inquisitive looks when I tell people I want them to catch inward right. versus catching sort of uh, straight down or even outward. Well, I think like if you're on a balance sense, mm -hmm. you would assume if you're asking me to catch inward that that's not going to help me balance. Right. Because you want a wider stance, just like in a general balance right. term. So sure. logically, it does sound a little odd. So I can understand right. why they might think that's weird. The cool thing about swimming is it's dynamic. You're not you're not stationary. You're you're mm -hmm. always you're always constantly changing balance points. Right. That's the coolest thing about swimming in my mind. Or one of the coolest things about swimming in my mind. Um so if someone catches inward, they can help their opposite hip, that cross body connection, rotate inward also or downward it just depends how you kind of perceive it which actually i feel like makes more sense in a positive or in like support of saying that you want to rotate inward while your opposite hand catches inward yeah because your hand is going to move in towards you as you move yeah and so if i'm rotating that way i'm just helping the th i'm facilitating that move oh my god i'm so smart right now you just figured it I out just figured it out that's pretty cool. So say what I just said, but say it eloquently. Oof. You want to catch <laughs> inwardly on your right, mm -hmm. rotate inward so on your left. So your left hip rotates inward. Which you're just helping your natural movement of your arm wanting to go in towards your body. Yep. Until you then rotate the opposite way when you Which finish. would be with the, the left. No, 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 no. You're not rotating uh, the opposite way. I went finish. too far. Your finish <clears throat> is actually continuing that left hip rotating down, but you could change your mindset and at that point and say, well, I'm now 
finishing outward. Which right? is what you should be doing. Right. So the circle freestyle, half of the circle is under the water. The other half is during the recovery above the water. So that means the start of the circle is inward towards your face or that V shape like you were describing. Mm -hmm. And the other quarter under the water would be outward away from your body because your hip has opened up on that right side now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make sense? Well, I, I hope feel like it following. did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it did as I was just talking, but who knows if I didn't just confuse everyone. These things are difficult to talk about without images. Yeah. But it's a podcast. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> so, so um, it, it supports this idea of catching inward. Because if you ca try to catch neutral or, or sort of downward, it doesn't work. It's not going to happen. And if you try to catch outward, like petting the dog, it certainly doesn't happen. Right. Okay. So it's incredibly important for people to start to understand this concept that your catch isn't important necessarily to generate propulsion. Mm -hmm. It is, but it's also important to help facilitate rotation. Your catch mm -hmm. is a position. So that same client that had a hard time on his shoulder, mm -hmm. I was surveying him uh, in the lesson because he's He'll say that he's not very attuned to his body, but he is. When it comes to in general, he is. Um, I'm not going to tell you his name. I saw that look. So, I'm just curious. Um, so he was telling me, mm -hmm. as I was asking him, mm -hmm. that when he was setting his catch, it didn't feel like there was any resistance against his paddle. And I literally had him with a giant paddle on his hand. But it wasn't until his shoulder blade started to shrug downward, which would be the start of the power phase, that he felt that resistance. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of his stroke, he felt a lot of resistance. And I told him that's what it's supposed to feel like. And he did not understand how that was possible. Really? But the catch, it does not generate propulsion. The catch... So you just set, you're setting it generates up. ...generates a paddle. Right. Generates a position. The propulsion is generated by the shoulder blade shrugging down. And it's at that precise moment as you generate that propulsion and that shoulder blade shrugs down, the opposite hip is rotating inward. Does that make sense? Yes, but let's go over it again. Sure. So we're doing, so the power phase is made up of your catch. Set my catch. No, your, your propulsive phase. I'm sorry, the phase. propulsive phase. Yes. Sorry. Propulsive phase set is... Oh my God. Made up of your catch, <laughs> which I'm just setting my paddle. Yep. The power phase where I'm shrugging downward. Yep. Keeping my elbow outward up and forward. Uh, we'll say outward. Okay. So it's like pointing to the side of the pool. You're always changing the words that I have to use. Uh, elbow bit. to my fore, elbow to my fingertips. It's my paddle. Yep. Power phase is that shrug down. down. Yep. And then the finish is the extension of your elbow. With your hand or your palm facing slightly outward to a, a pretty much extended arm before it exits the water. Right. And now you're saying that the catch is just a setting of your paddle. There is no propulsion from this movement. And if you're watching on YouTube, I think it's pretty <laughs> clear there's no propulsion from here because, well. But that's not what people are how, led to believe. How could there be? But right? I mean, yeah. People are always told, oh, you got to learn how to catch better. That's If you want to get faster, catch better. Well, yeah. I mean, it's true. Set the paddle. But because so you can't catch as, or you can't, you're not pushing back against as much if you don't properly set your catch A, early, and B, properly. Like me, let's see, 26 years of swimming, just drop, drop, drop. Oh, I'm supposed to catch. Okay, cool. And then I've lost, I right, don't so know, 30%. You caught, la la you caught mm -hmm. late. Right. So it also affected your rotation. So it shortens... My power phase. God, my yeah. propulsive. No, no my power shorten, phase. It would shorten your there power phase. There are too phase. many terms in this Too sport. many phases. Too many words. Mm. Just too much. Too much It's all just too much. Um, but I like it. So mm -hmm. the way that I would recommend people start to try to learn this mm -hmm. on their own mm -hmm. is really simple. Use a fairly big hand paddle if you have one. Or if you just have like a smaller hand paddle that you normally use, that's fine. Do one arm freestyle with your inactive arm down by your side. So if you're stroking with your left arm, your right arm be down by your side. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to start 
by basically kicking slightly on your side. So you, we'll, we'll use your left arm as an example, right? So your left arm is the stroking arm. Your right arm is down. So that means your right hip is going to be slightly rotated up. It does not need to be rotated 90 degrees. You don't, you don't need to be rotated 90 degrees on your side to do this. Okay. So, you know, somewhere around 45 degrees is a great starting point. Okay. okay. So your right hip is slightly rotated up. So it's about 45 degrees. You're going to generate a catch position with your left arm. I can't do my left arm, so we're going to do right arm. I'm not changing it now. Use your imagination. As your left shoulder blade shrugs downward, try to get your right hip to rotate inward, mm -hmm. and then finish your stroke, do your recovery, set it up all over again. Why do we have a paddle? The paddle is there so that your arm can move slowly and controlled through the water to make sure you, A, set a good catch, B, shrug your shoulder blade, C, connect the shrug of the shoulder blade downward with the opposite hip rotating inward. And I'm assuming D, so you can feel D the resistance? is because it's obvious resistance. Oh, okay. Don't now, go fast. If you're going to go fast, take the paddle off. Why do you want them to have a larger paddle? I always tell people not to have larger paddles because, because the larger the paddle, the more risk you have of hurting sure. your shoulder joint. That's because you're trying to generate force. If I'm just swimming with paddles. Right, exactly. But okay. if, if, if you're not trying to really generate force and you're just kind of going slowly, mm -hmm. that paddle isn't going to be unsafe. It's only unsafe okay. if you start trying to move quickly. So okay. move slowly and you'll you'll be able to control the movements, mm -hmm. but that paddle is going to kind of give you some feedback, some obvious feedback, so, whether you've generated resistance or not. And then only in this instance do we suggest you use a paddle that is that big. slightly large. Exactly. Okay. And exactly. what we mean by that is I normally suggest people get paddles that have a very little amount of room. I would say less than a half an inch. Above is your Is what fingertips. I would normally ask people. You don't want to have stuff more than an inch past where your fingertips will lie that's when you get into trouble for sure it's better to be smaller actually when yes. you're using them just in practice like if you're just swimming with paddles the smaller the safer yeah i agree absolutely so with this one it's just one arm freestyle mm -hmm. it's a very common drill right you're just slowing it down slowing it down mm -hmm. putting that paddle in so you have that easy feedback mm-hmm but it's also a different focus than normal, right? It's a different focus than what normal people would think about during their one arm freestyle. Mm -hmm. Most people would think about their arm during one arm freestyle. Yeah, and you are a that little makes sense. bit, but where I'm asking you to think about how you're catching, how you're generating your power phase through your shoulder blade and how that is connecting your opposite hip. And that's where I really want people to try to focus is how does it feel? Is it does it feel connected or not? So so far, mm -hmm. everyone has felt that connection. Oh, that's good. It takes time to sort of it, understand. It actually, taken, it actually hasn't taken a lot of time. It's been yeah. pretty quick. And that like people can do it maybe three or four times. They go, oh my god, I feel that. I get it now. Yeah. Now in swimbox, we do it a little bit differently. We do that drill, but that's like the second step in swimbox. In mm -hmm. swimbox, we use a strap so that you have obvious resistance and we also make sure that your shoulder blade moves very well before we even attempt doing this but if you want that level of detail come to swimbox if you want to just work on it on your own go work on it on your own email us if you have questions about it i'm happy and we can make a drill uh video for youtube sure. about it as well sure uh it feels weird to make a drill video for it because it's more about a concept versus about an actual drill. I think what we should do, because I've posted this on Instagram a lot, but I mean, it's hard to reference things on Instagram. Um, I think we should just post a video of what your shoulder blade needs to look like during the shrug up and okay. the glide down so that we have something to reference. I know we have a video that sort of shows that yeah it's very long it's really long and we should just put a short one up so that we can reference it in the future so we can do that Smart. so you guys know exactly what the movement is that we're looking for and the reason why your shoulder blade movement is so important is because it protects your shoulder joint from getting injured and i mean that's one of the main reasons why i talk about it so frequently as opposed to all of the beautiful reasons it helps your stroke be better but yeah i mean it's just injury makes you prevention faster too yeah but injury prevention is also 
very important. We want everyone to be able to swim for as long as they possibly can. So, yes, Mm -hmm. exactly. For the rest of their lives would be my goal. Yeah. So, all right. Do you feel like we've done a good job of? I think if we go any farther, it will become much more confusing. So I think that's a good small topic to start talking about. Yeah, this was like kind of short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, short. I don't know about sweet. You might have been sweet, not me. Um, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> nobody knows all right um anything to add anything we need to mention uh we're gonna be doing our q a podcast soon so if you guys have any other questions you want to submit we've got probably a week left um we've got some pretty good ones actually so far but yeah. anyway you have another week if you want to and we'll answer anything who should they they send their questions uh, to? email send me to <laughs> my emails all the one all over the websites l-i-s-s-a at the swimbox.com there you go um yeah all right follow us on instagram swim underscore box everything google swim box you'll find us it's pretty easy it's pretty straightforward it's kind of hard not to find us we're annoyingly everywhere we try to be all right mm-hmm. that's it merry christmas almost bye, bye. <laughs>